But hello, everyone. Um, for all the attendees who have joined us right at this point in time, I'm sure we'll have a few more join us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll start colloquium. And today we really just have three goals. And most of it is to get you ready for spring, to close out this semester and to get you ready for spring. And as we go along, I'm going to ask um, our advisory committee member, council members that join in and help out as uh, we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen and get this uh, colloquium up and underway. So as I said, we really only have three uh, uh, goals for today, and uh, maybe it'll take a long time. I don't believe so, but we'll see how much time we need to use this. Uh, first of all, we want to help you get ready to schedule for spring, and very shortly what's going to drop is you're going to get an announcement with some materials to help you do to do that. We're also going to go ahead and get you to participate in a mock vote for Maryville, and I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. And lastly, I want to remind you about things that have to be done to finish up for um, this honors colloquium. So let's go ahead and get started on scheduling for spring semester. So just to remind you, all you need to do to complete the Bascom Honors Program is to fill in a course for each one of these categories. So you're currently in Honors 260H. Um, so that one's gonna be finished by the end of this semester. And then I'm really gonna strongly encourage you to go ahead and take Honors 261H, which is the follow-up colloquium for next semester. Again, it's, it's very similar to this one. It's just kind of a continuation of what we've been doing this semester. Unfortunately, it will most likely be on Zoom, but you know, fingers crossed that maybe things will get better and we'll be able to do something in person um, next semester as well. And then you need to complete an honor seminar for each one of these categories. Uh, if you happen to take English 204H, for instance, that counts for humanities um, in your in terms of completing the Bascom Honors Program. So again, we've got the two colloquium, the seven seminars, and you and you will have completed the Bascom Honors Program. So what's going to drop? I think at 5:15, um, I'm dropping my hot album of the of the semester which are basically the seminar lists for the coming spring semester. It, it'll hit everyone's uh, email as an announcement and it'll also be posted on the Canvas course. Um, but essentially what I do every semester is work with our honors faculty to figure out what honors seminars will be available for the coming semester. And what I'd like to do now is kind of go through that list so that you understand what's on the list. And I'm gonna invite all my co-hosts here to um, share in if there's anything as we go through the list, you know, faculty or seminars that you've seen, because oftentimes we'll repeat seminars, but there are a few this semester that are brand new. Um, so let me go ahead and open this up so we can all see it. Hopefully you can all see it here. Can you see it? Yes, we see the list. So uh, I saw a hand raise and yeah, the co-host, if you can also uh, pay attention to the chat and help with some questions, because I'm not really good at doing all those things at once. Um, so right now we have the course descriptions. These are for spring 21, because I know all of you are preparing to get registered um, for, this, uh, for the upcoming semester. We have a variety of, of seminars that span across all the different areas uh, for, that are required in that degree programming sheet. You'll see when you get this sheet as it comes, as it comes to you that what I've done is I've listed all of the all of the different seminars. So for instance, we'll look at this first one, Interpreting World Art. It tells you who the faculty member is. It tells you when it meets, uh, on what days and when it meets. It gives you the course listing as well. It tells you also here what it qualifies for in terms of the planner. So for instance, this Interpreting World Arts can count for humanities, it can count for fine arts, or it can count in the electives. And then Another thing that we've done is we've put together seminar videos for each, oh, I think every one of our seminars this semester uh, has a video so that you can also see from the faculty member um, what, they, what they like about the seminar, what they're planning to do in this seminar, and just get a sense of, of who they are a little bit. 
So these are all hyperlinks that go to our Bascom Honors YouTube page, where you can go just directly there too and see all the posted seminars as well. So this first one is really Todd Brennan Meyer. Um, unfortunately, this semester, uh, we actually have two fine arts. We often have a hard time with fine arts and finding fine arts. Uh, any council members, have you taken uh, any courses from um, Professor Brennan Meyer? Emma, just jump in. I have, um, I took this class last semester, so spring, and I was actually really upset that we were sent home because I loved this class. Um, he was, he's just so nice. It was at 8 a.m., but I never skipped it because like, I just love this class. And even though I had like no interest, I hope he's not listening to this. I had like no interest <laughs> in art. Um, I, I finished this class and like, I look at things differently, like not to be weird, but I'm like, I remember when Bernie Meyer talked about that in class. Like, I, I miss Bernie Meyer. I, <laughs> I love that class. That's great to hear. Now, is this the class where you uh, nap Flint and that sort of thing? Because I know, Hunter, um, you took another class from uh, Professor Bernie Meyer where you did that. Well, I don't know what that is, so no. Yeah, okay. I took the art, the art one. It was pretty fun. It was, it was really hands-on. So we did, like, Flint making and, and we, like, cooked chicken and stuff, so... Yeah, so that's that's another class that he he offers for honors. But right, Emma, you like this one? Think about art differently. Anyone else happen to have Dr. Brendan Meyer at some point in time? No. So so Emma's going to give you the the seal of approval on this one. And Definitely say, take this class. Like it sounds, I wouldn't say unappealing, but you're like, oh, like world art. But I I love this class. <laughs> that's great. That's great to hear. Um, then the second class, I'm just going to kind of go through these quickly. I don't want to keep everyone too, too long on here. The second one is a brand new course. So this course has never been offered in honors before. It's a brand new design. This is a communications course. So we haven't offered a communications course in honors before. And what's really going to be great about this course is it's about communications and leadership. So if you think of yourself in some time being part of a leadership team or being a leader, this will be a great course for you. One of the things that um, uh, Leilani, the, Dr. Carver will be doing with this course is also bringing in guest speakers who are leaders um, locally, nationally, and internationally, um, and having the opportunity to really talk with them about their leadership, what they try to do in terms of leadership, how they communicate as leaders. So this, this will be an exciting new course um, and it's really neat to get to know Dr. Carver because she also works very much with um, leadership in the local area, um, also with women's studies and women leaders on campus. So highly recommend this brand new course in terms of uh, communication leadership. Never been offered before. Have, you, have any of you guys ever had um, Dr. Carver for a communications course? Nope. So, you check, if you click on the video, you can see her, you can find out about her, great professor. Um, now this next course is one that's very popular and is offered a lot, so I'll be curious to see. I bet Maya might know Dr. Brandt. Um, and this is, it, the, the title doesn't sound really great, Sexual Violence and Aggression, um, but it is a very popular course. It always fills up pretty quickly. And it's because uh, Dr. Brandt is a former police officer and she brings her experience uh, from being a police officer to this course and talks about uh, things that she's witnessed and how um, basically in criminology they look at this. Maya, can you share anything about this one? Um, so I haven't taken this particular course yet. However, I've had like Dr. Brandt a couple times and she's an amazing teacher. She's very enthusiastic. She's very like interpersonal and she really connects with her, um, her students, whether it's in class or like online. And she's great at like emailing back and getting to the questions that like students have. So she's like, the, like one of the best professors I've actually had at Maryville. That's great. And Claire, I see you nodding your head. Did you take this one? I did. I took this course. It was so fascinating. Like, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. So fair warning there. But if I know that a lot of people are just like, this kind of stuff just like fascinates people, at least it did for me and a lot of the people in my class. 
And Dr. Brandt is amazing, or Professor Brandt. I mean. And yeah, I agree with everything that Maya said. Like, I highly recommend everyone taking this class. It's so great. I, like I said, I know it always fills up really fast. So if this is one that you want to get in, um, if it, and we offer it every year. So if you don't get in this, this coming spring, it will be offered again. This is a course that is a regular repeater. Um, so ho hopefully that will be something that will spark, uh, spark your interest. As you can see, uh, a lot of our courses are going to be offered Tuesday and Thursday. And when you go into self-service, you'll see if they're, um, they're going to be virtual or on ground or some sort of hybrid mix. This one will count for a social science or an elective category. Uh, the next one that also features Dr. Brandt, except it's a co-taught uh, co course, is with Dr. Brandt and Dr. Murray, and it's detective fiction. So what we have here is you get two faculty for the price of one. Um, one is an English uh, faculty member, Dr. Murray, Jermaine Murray, and the other, Dr. Brandt, you just heard about. And what they're going to do is look at the genre of detective fiction and bring together, you know, how to look at it from a literary perspective, but also how to look at it from a forensics and a criminology perspective. So it's a fun interdisciplinary course where you get a chance of seeing um, a kind of a broad spectrum of this detective fiction genre. So it's a great course for filling your humanities, a social science and an elective because they kind of cover all of those things at, at once. Any, any of our council seen this one? Um, I've never taken it, but I had Dr. Murray, and she is so funny, and she's so sweet, and I love her. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Murray is one of our regulars in the honors program, and this is also another course that um, regularly repeats, that we repeat this one um, pretty much every year. Then the next course I think will be probably pretty popular, given uh, how popular Marvel and DC is. It's Superheroes in Literature and Culture. Um, this is taught by Dr. Cavadlo, so it is a humanities course, but because if you are taking it for fine art credit, we've worked out that you can actually, you will actually do an art project about superheroes as part of this course. So this can count for fine arts as well. So this is one of only two seminars we'll have for spring semester that will count for fine arts. Um, you can see the description. Uh, many of you might know Dr. Cavadlo because of first year experience. He oversees all the first year experience. Um, but this course, it hasn't been taught in several years. He really wanted to teach it. We normally teach, uh, he normally teaches reading rock and roll during the spring. Um, not going to do it this year. He really wanted to teach this uh, superheroes course. So I'm sure none of our council members have ever taken that, but maybe you've had Dr. Cavadlo at some point in time. Nope. Okay. Trust me, great guy. Um, and many of you in first year experience know about him. So I expect this class to be a lot of fun. And like I said, you can take it for either humanities or fine arts. And if you take it as fine arts, then there'll be an art project. If you take it as a humanities, there'll be more of a writing project with that. Um, and then we have English 204H, uh, Composition and Community. The thing to know about this is that this course substitutes for English 104. So all students are required to take English 104 unless they brought in some kind of uh, transfer credit. So if you take this English 204, it will count for your English 104 category. And it also counts for humanities in the honors program. So it's a great opportunity. If you're an education um, person, if you're an education student, I strongly encourage you to take this because this has a bit of tutoring as part of the community aspect of it. So it, it can be a great opportunity for students to fulfill your English 104, fulfill your honors humanities, and also get some experience working kind of with tutoring, something that a lot of our honor students end up doing anyway. Uh, anyone taken English 204? Yeah, I took it um, last fall. Okay, and? Um, be honest. It's, it's just an English class, like. <laughs> You write papers, you talk. I'm not saying it's bad. It's not bad, but the tutoring is fine. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I, you know, I really want you guys to be honest here and just be candid about things, okay? Um, even about when you get to my courses. Uh, but actually, no, actually I'm teaching a new course, so you guys can't even talk about that one, I don't think. But uh, in terms of, of this, I think the tutoring this, in English 204H is a little bit challenging right now because we're all doing this. 
So I'm not sure exactly how Dr. Marino is, is handling that, but you can check out his video and he'll talk to you. Uh, he'll share a little bit about how that course is set up. Dr. Marino is also teaching uh, a class on Tolkien and medieval and modern writing. Um, I'm looking across the board. I'm not seeing any thumbs up about anyone who's taking this, but if you like that genre of film or books, uh, he is kind of the Maryville expert on this. This is a course he teaches every year and he really loves teaching this course and it always gets great reviews. So this, this would be one um, to, to take if you, if you like Tolkien, if you like, um, what was it, Game of Thrones, that sort of genre. And this counts for humanities, as you can see. Next is another brand new course um, being developed just for honors, just for this coming spring. And it's based on both history and the musical um, Hamilton. So this is being taught by Lee, uh, our resident historian, Lisa Lilly. Um, and it's all over, as you can see, based around Alexander Hamilton. She is very excited about teaching this course. In fact, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the video for this one, just so you get a sense of how much she's really excited about this course. So hopefully you'll be able to hear it and see it for that matter. Can we see it folks? Okay, so here it goes. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Lisa Lilly, um, and I'm the head of the history department here at New Hampshire University. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about a groundbreaking new class called Alexander Hamilton, Worlds at War. Um, like many of you, I hope, uh, I am a big fan of the musical uh, Hamilton by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Um, and uh, what the point of this class is to do is to explore the very beginnings of United States history, um, uh, replete with all of the problems therein, uh, slavery, treatment of Native Americans, the place of women, we won't shy away from any of it, through the lens of Hamilton, uh, the man, so the historical figure, so we'll read his letters, um, his journals, uh, all original sources. Uh, all right, that's enough just to give you a, a hint and an uh, idea about what she's hoping to do with this. And you can see, she's very excited about this course. It should be, uh, Dr. Lilly is a great prof uh, faculty member, a great professor. She uh, often teaches in the honors program. So I'm excited for her offering this brand new course. Anyone have Dr. Lilly by chance? Okay, well, we'll keep rolling on then. Then we have Colloquium 2. As I said, if you're finishing up Colloquium 1, let's go ahead and finish up Colloquium 2. It's, it's very much the same sort of situation that we're doing now, except hopefully we'll be able to get more involved as before. Another course that we've only offered one other time is this co-taught course in terms of the high cost of poverty. Emma, you're nodding your head. So you were in that original time around. I was, it was. Okay, well good. I liked it. Well, great answer. <laughs> I mean, you were there, so. So this time, this is a, a really, um, I love this course, and I love this course because it really embodies being interdisciplinary. So you're getting four faculties for the price of one. So this time, this course will be taught by uh, Dr. Kara Conby, uh, Dr. Kent Bosman, um, Dr. Jessica Bowers, and myself. And we're looking at poverty from four different perspectives. So we're looking at it from a sociology perspective, a political perspective, a humanities perspective, and also from education. So those of you who are in education, I strongly recommend that. And basically what we're doing is looking at, you know, how is poverty, how is poverty in the United States? What are we doing about it? And looking at from different perspectives, how do we perceive it? How does it interact in education? So you really get a sense of poverty from different perspectives. We also have a simulation that's in the middle of the course. So you get an idea about poverty and life and poverty. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about this course is that each of the faculty takes several weeks and we'll be meeting as a whole group. Everyone who's in the course will meet as a whole group on one day, that'll be on Tuesdays. And on Thursdays, you'll have discussion labs where you'll be in a breakout and meet just with one faculty member. So when you sign up for this course, you sign up for the course and then you sign up for a lab that goes along with it. It doesn't matter which lab, we don't even have names on the lab. So you get to do, you have to sign up for both of those 
Okay, so that's the only trick with it. So it's kind of like a biology or a science class where you also sign up for a lab. So you sign up for the course and sign up with a lab that goes with it. What's also great about this course for, for all of you, you probably got almost your entire planner open in terms of needing different things. This course will count for humanities or it'll count for a history government or it'll count for social science or for an elective. So you can fit it into any of those categories. It'll count for any one of those categories. So it's a great flexible course like that. Like that. Emma, do you got anything you'd like to say about the course? Because you were with it the first time we piloted it. Yeah, I, I took this course. It was like my second honors course that I ever took. Um, I absolutely loved it. Like I still think about what we learned because poverty is so prevalent in our world today that I think about everything that we talked about all the time. I was in Bosman's um, little lab thing. Right. Um, yeah, we had like great discussions. I had great people in my class. Um, I highly recommend this class, especially because it um, applies for so many things, especially just like he said, how your schedule is so open. So just take it now and then fill your schedule up um, how you want later because this course applies for so much that you can move it around however you need. That's right. That's a really good point, Emma, because you may take it right now thinking, oh, I'll use it for my, um, my humanities course. But then later you see a humanities course like reading rock and roll or, or something comes along. You're like, oh, I'll take that. Then you can slide this into one of the other categories. The other nice thing about this is that um, it's got a large number. Most of our honors courses cap right around between 12 and 18. This, because of the, we have four faculty teaching it, we can take a lot of students in this one. And then we break down into small groups on the second day. So it'll be a great course. I'm really looking forward to teaching it again. And as Emma said, because of the pandemic, um, poverty is a serious issue. And it's good to understand it from lots of different perspectives and also start thinking about how we as a country can do better in that area and help people more in those areas. Um, just a couple more courses here and then um, we'll- Dr. We'll Craddick? Yeah, Maya. We have, um, we have a question. So um, regarding the labs, um, the uh, labs attached to like a, like courses. Yeah. Uh, I want to know will the lab will with the whole the lab plus the course still be four credits or would it be more credits? No, it'll still be four credit hours. Yeah, it'll be a total of four credit hours, just like all the other courses. Um, it it only meets twice, so this course only meets twice. Like I said, one day as a whole group, the other day as a discussion lab, a small group. But thanks for asking that question. Um, then we have Globalization Towards Sustainability by Dr. Conby. Uh, Dr. Conby is a political science, uh, political scientist. People love this course. I know this one fills up a lot. Anyone here have taken that one? So she looks at the issue of globalization in general, and then, you know, how can we do it in a sustainable way without causing lots of conflict and that sort of thing. So it's a history, government, social science, or an elective course. Then we'll be offering two sections of thinking like a social scientist. Those of you who are in psychology or um, sometimes in criminology as well, often take, like to take this course because it, um, it's one that's recommended for those majors. Um, these are generally, uh, this is only being taught this year in the spring semester. So it wasn't offered this semester. Um, it is a psychology course, social science course. It's taught by, we've got two different sections of it. Um, and it's really about how to do social science. So it's, it is a course that we offer every year and it's one that's also fills up pretty quickly. Anyone here? Take I, this I've one? taken it. Um, yeah. I took it with Nadler and okay. Nadler was by far my second favorite professor I've ever had. I know who your first one is. It, it's Craddock, of course, but, of course. Um, but yeah, no, it was great. Um, that was right when COVID hit, he took it with stride. Um, I learned so much from that class. You know, he's, he's a fantastic professor and I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know much about Austin. I'm sure he's the same, but Nadler has, has my respect. Awesome. Professor Austin is pretty great too. I had him for a different course, but he's very awesome as well. I have not heard a bad thing about either professor. So just whatever works for everyone. But yeah, I've also heard like really good things about that course. So Excellent. Thanks for, for uh, 
giving those testimonials for that. And then our, our last course for the semester that will be offered next semester is Science 131H. Uh, for many of you in the health professions, this is a this is a requirement uh, in your degree planning sheets. Dr. Brzezini will be teaching it. Um, she's she's teaching, I think, this semester, and she is the one you want to teach it. She's really excellent, um, and I, I this is also a course that also usually fills up really fast. Anyone here have that, Claire? Yeah, I took this class last fall. It was so much fun. I love Dr. Brazzini. She's great. Like this was, I made some of my like best friends in this class. We had a blast. We're still friends now. And yeah, it's just super fun. She's very like knowledgeable with the topic. And then at the end of the semester, I don't know how COVID, I don't know if it'll work with COVID now, but like we had like a a little party where we all brought some like healthy dishes and we like celebrated the end of the semester and stuff. It was so much fun. <laughs> That's great. Mackenzie, you took it too? Yeah, I didn't have Brazzini for it, but I know our professor went off of what Brazzini had. And I just thought that a sp this is really helpful, especially for um, health professions. Like obviously anyone can take it. Um, I had a lot of, there were a lot of people from every different major, but I know with health professions, there's a lot of courses that we have to take later on that this definitely helps and I've started using it and it's it's a really good course and it's a really good way to get involved. It's not too difficult as what people think honors courses tend to be. It's a lot of communication with your peers, kind of like what Claire was saying, and you get to know a lot of people from a lot of different majors and it's really it's a really good course. Excellent. Yeah, I know it fills up every semester and um, students really enjoy it. And, you know, nutrition, hey, that's something we all need to pay attention to at this point in time. So at the bottom, so by now, all of you should have received an announcement that has, a, um, has this PDF in it so that you have all this information for yourself. You'll see at the very back of the PDF, there's kind of a chart because, again, you're trying to fill in the different categories in your planner. And so it shows you which classes count for which categories right to help you figure out which ones can you that you can fit in so hopefully you've all received that by now you've received that announcement um, and that you're able to access this please go to the videos check out the videos you'll get to see the faculty members and hear them talk about the classes as well I have a question sure someone asked or they mentioned that the criminology one the sexual assault one it says that it's Monday, Wednesday on self-service, but it's Tuesday, Thursday on this sheet. Um, is it going to change? Is that? No, it's whatever ends up in self-service. Okay. Um, I can tell you that, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you brought this up. So self-service. Last those, year they changed. Yeah. For, for, um, for those of you who are new to campus, self-service is what you know. For the rest of us, it's a brand new system, basically. And they are still kind of tweaking a few things in it, still debugging it. Um, so there may be a movement here or there in a class. I don't expect them to move, but I'm glad to hear uh, that the one has. And so I'll make a corrections as, as I find out about changes that happens and repost this. This is the best information I have at this point in time. And we've been working on setting this up for spring. But again, uh, registration doesn't really open until next month anyway but I want to get this out there. Most of this information I expect to be solid. There may be a class here or there. So that was one. And another one that is a possible that might move is the Alexander Ham Hamilton class. Um, I've heard that they're, they're trying to keep it in the slot, but they're moving lots of things around. Because as you imagine, we're st they're still trying to figure out how are we going to accommodate all of our students for, for next semester. All right, any other questions? guys that you saw there um so again we have a chart it shows you which which courses fit in which categories to help you fill out your planner so with that i want to take a minute and actually let's see if i can do this um as people who who have me in class know that i sometimes when i'm trying to to get multiple screens i get a little bit out of can't actually manage them as well as I'd like. There it is. Um, Maryville, every, every presidential election 
actually we do a, a mock vote at least ever since since i've been here we've done it um and what we've been able to do is usually i'll stand out on the quad or we'll get a couple of people standing out on the quad and hand out t-shirts to anyone who votes um, and we ask you to to go ahead and vote on whomever you think uh you would like to vote for so we're doing that again this year and i think and you know council members please uh check this for me i think you can actually hold your phone up to that screen and actually use the qr code to take you to the page where you vote um so it works it, so it does work all right, that's awesome. I'm going to also send out the link in the chat. Look at me, kind of multitasking. Um, and if you cast your vote in the mock vote, then you'll be eligible to get a T-shirt that will be sent to you. You know, there'll be places to pick it up or it'll be mailed to you. So that's for, um, I think. I think uh, it says on on the sheet, I think we're going to have about 800 shirts available. So you got a really good chance of getting a shirt. Um, so everyone, I'd really like you to take just a minute now, cast your vote for who you think, is, uh, who you want to vote for for president. Now, here's why that's important. Like I said, I've been doing this ever since I've been at Maryville. So this is my fourth presidential election. In every previous year, Maryville has picked the winner. We've never missed it. We've always been right. So um, looking to see now in this world of virtual elections, whether, uh, whether we'll be right again this year. So just take a minute and cast your vote and then we'll move on. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you exactly one minute here to, for everyone to do this. Your choice, cast a vote and we'll see if Maryville once again is correct. So, um, Maryville correctly predicted the first two, uh, the, the two Obama elections, then predicted uh, in 2016, President Trump winning. And so we'll be curious to see who, uh, see if the campus predicts the winner for this election as well. And when you vote, you will be automatically enrolled to get a t-shirt. Vote Howie, vote third party. <laughs> You're you're welcome. You um, against my judgment, they went ahead and put all of the possible candidates on there. Uh, Hunter Hunter's in my elections class right now, and he's laughing. He's saying third party because I'll tell you all, as a political scientist, voting third party is throwing away your vote. You probably don't want to hear that, but it's true. Third parties can't win, and so when you vote third party. Uh, I'm not trying to bias your vote. Hopefully you've already voted at this point in time. You're basically taking away a vote from the person who's closest to the position you like. Because um, third parties, just the way the system is built, at least at this point in time in, in American history, have don't have a chance of winning it all. All right. So with hopefully you got a chance to get your vote in. And we'll go ahead and move up and finishing up. And we'll finish up this colloquium. Well, looks like we're going to finish early. I just want to remind you all of the things that need to be done to, whoops, I should say two, uh, 260, to finish up colloquium this semester. So this is our third mandatory meeting. So you've got all of those things done and the honors quiz, that'll be all finished. You still need, I still need two reflections. And this year we've added an honor survey at the end and I need you to do that too, that's on Canvas. So please go ahead and make sure you get your two reflections in on Canvas and your final day um, and your final survey for, for the semester. Remember that reflection one should be on one of these three online kind of personal learning tools. So what you do is you go to one of these, you pick which one you want, say you wanna do develop a growth mindset, you go through the activities that's on that online learning and then you write up a short reflection and submit it on Canvas, all right? It's that simple. So you choose one of these three if you haven't done that one yet. The second one is there is a posted list of activities that are, we've all, I accumulated, put together and curated for you that you can choose from and you choose one of those. They're 
pretty much all virtual this semester, unfortunately. And you've probably been, been getting announcements from me of other events that are coming on. In fact, I've got a backlog. Today, someone sent me about six new events that are going to be coming up. Um, so I'll be sending those out as announcements as well. You go to, you choose one of those to attend. Again, you write up a reflection, you submit it on Canvas. All right. Only two reflections a semester. That's it. Pretty simple. Um, most of the activities you can find and you need to register on Get Involved MU. If by chance there's an activity you see on Get Involved MU or maybe you're planning one that you would like to count for a colloquium, let me know. Just contact me and I can tell you whether it's one that counts or not. And I can also help promote it to honor students. For instance, uh, one of the listed programs um, that I know is very popular every year is our Hol Holocaust Survivor Talk. Uh, this year it's been moved to November 2nd. So that's Monday, November 2nd. Um, it, there is a link to on Get Involved in You. You can go there, sign on. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, I, I can't say that it's a fun event because it's about an awful period of history, but it's really an important event uh, to attend if you can, because um, given the age of people who survived the Holocaust, there's just fewer and fewer people, actual survivors of the Holocaust, um, who you can hear from. As it turns out, Magda Bader is, um, she lives in Boston. Uh, she's 93 years old. She is an actual survivor, and um, she'll be zooming in to talk about her experiences and also to do Q and A. Have uh, any of you guys uh, advisory attended these in the past? The Holocaust speakers who we brought to campus. I, I was in the one last year or the year before it. Um, it was actually really interesting. Really interesting. It really put things in perspective, and it, you know, it was sad, but you know, in the end, you really learn a lot about it. You you learn to respect it a little bit more. Um, and it definitely just piqued my interest in that time period as well. Thanks, Hunter. Yeah, it's and as I said, you know, just like World War II veterans, you know, people are coming of an age where they're not going to be around to hear personal stories for very much longer. So it's important when you get the opportunity to, to hear from people to hear about what that experience is. So that's just one of many different activities you can attend. But I did want to highlight that one. And again, it's just a simple reflection, one to two pages. You tell me about the, the event that you attended and kind of what it made you think about. Because really the purpose of this activity is to get you to think about the things that you attend, to see education as something outside of the classroom, see that it's really just about learning stuff. And then as honor students, what we want you to do is always be learning all the time. And it doesn't have to be you know, just learning from a book or to take a test or to complete an assignment, but to go and just kind of explore and be inquisitive about life and about new experiences. So with that, that ends our colloquium. Does, are there any other questions or comments from, um, from anyone here on the advisory? So we just have a few questions. Sure. Um, and so one of the questions was, so someone watched the um, vice presidential uh, debate and they wanted to know, can they write a reflection on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would love to, I would love to see reflections on that. Uh, and by the way, we have a presidential debate coming up on Thursday. Uh, it, it will be a unique one because the moderators will actually have mute buttons on the microphones of the two debaters. So that, that should be a lot of fun. We'll see how that plays out. Um, if you'd like to use that as a colloquium event, absolutely can do that as well. Um, again, it's all about learning and being inquisitive about kind of what's happening in the world. And then I, the second mm -hmm. question was just, um, they wanted to know what's the time limit to um, have the reflections in by. I'm looking through like the Canvas modules and I don't see it. Right, so um, what you should do is turn them in within a week of doing of, of the attendance of the event. But the final day, I'll go back to it. The final day is the 8th of December. Or yes, the 8th of December. So that's in the syllabus. And you can see reflections deadline. The final day to submit your reflections on Canvas is December 8th. Don't wait till then. I hate getting like 100 of them on the 8th. 
And then, because uh, what, I, what I will do is I will read through every one and give you a comment about each one. Um, so it, I would much rather spread those out than have them all show up on one day. But you, you're supposed to turn in, I, I, I'm making a lot of allowances this semester because you know it's fall 2020 and it's kind of a crazy time for all of us. Um, but you should, you should get those turned in within the, a week of the attending the events. Back to the question slide. Any other questions, comments? Um, the last question would just be, so someone, the, I guess the times of the events and the Zoom like meetings conflict with his schedule. And so he wanted to know, um, can he do maybe alternative reflections? Because he can, yeah. Sure, sure. So if, if you know, the colloquium uh, events, the qualifying events that I've listed don't, for some reason you're not able to attend, you're, uh, you are definitely um, welcome to just email me. You can see my email right there and suggest something that you would like to use as a qualifying event. And I'll get right back to you and let you know whether it's a good one or maybe even propose something else. All right, trying to, make, trying to be flexible with this. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you all for attending today. I hope you know that's helped you think about what you're going to take uh, for the spring semester. Uh, also, that you voted for a mock election. We'll see, get the results of that pretty soon. We'll see if uh, Maryville is, is right as always. And then um, finish up those colloquium assignments so that we can go ahead and, and finish this colloquium for you for this semester and check that off of your list for the rest of, uh, of this semester. Hopefully even before we go off to Thanksgiving break. So thank my thanks to all of our council members who attended. Um, hopefully you now that you see them, you see their names, you can look them up, talk with them. We I know we posted their contact information on the Canvas site, so reach out to them if you've got questions. Um, otherwise, please take care of yourselves. Uh, I know we're getting into a very busy period of time. Try to get some sleep and uh, take care of yourselves and stay healthy.